In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to shoot with a lower shutter speed than your frame rate, and also explain a few reasons why you might wanna do that. And no, it's not your connection. Uh, I'm actually shooting with a really low shutter right now, but the rest of the video will be completely normal. So I've seen a lot of people in forums and on groups lately asking how to get their, um, their shutter speed below their frame rate. Um, for example, if you are shooting in 24 frames a second, then you might want to go below one over 24. And it's, it's kind of tricky to do this because there's certain settings that you have to have set, uh, to do this. So, uh, I'm going to show you how to do that. I've also seen some people question why you might want to do that. And so if you stick around to the end, I'll show some applications on when to do that, why it's cool and unique and uh, show some visual examples of that. Okay, to start, I'll show you exactly how to set this up on your Fuji camera. And this can work for your X-T3, X-T4, uh, X-H2, X-H2S. I would assume pretty much anything outside of those. Those are just the ones that I've used and done this with. So there are a lot of settings that keep you from being able to do this. And that list is pretty extensive. Uh, some of it is you can't be in long GOP and you can't be shooting in 6K or, or in 60 frames a second. But I will have this handy diagram here that says what you can use a lower shutter speed than your frame rate in. And this list is not extensive because I don't have certain cameras, but I do know you can do it in these modes. And so I'll go through and actually show you on this camera a, a one good setting that I like that I think works in almost every application, but uh, you can kind of play around with it yourself based off the list that I sent you. And there might be some other cameras that I don't have that have other settings such as the X-H2 with the 8K mode. I would assume you can't use it in that, but maybe someone could fact check me on that. And now once you've done that, you can see that you can go as low as one over four in these particular settings at least, and maybe even lower uh, depending on the settings. But I don't know that you would need to go lower than one over four. It would just look like a complete blur, blobs of people and flowers and stuff. But yeah, now you know how to do that and that's super fun. And you can go and have fun with it, experiment with it, but a lot of people might be like, why? Why would I want to do that? Some people I saw even said like, that's a technical error if you don't do that. And that's fine uh, if you don't want to do that because it's a stylistic choice, but there are some really fun things that you can do with that. So I want to show you some examples. Okay, the first one is just maybe, maybe you're out in the field and you need more light and you can't open up anymore. And if you crank your ISO any more than it would look terrible. Well, some filmmakers have made movies where they shot it more open like that. And it kind of almost creates a slightly dreamlike effect. It, it just makes things kind of bloom a little more and halate a little more because of the blur. And so there have been uh, cinematographers that have made that stylistic choice. And it also helps that you get a little more light if it is night scenes and stuff. And I've done this before, like even if it's not one over 24, um, but like lowering my shutter lower than one over 180, then this is a decent option to do that. This is also great if you want to create an effect that's very disorienting. And so uh, maybe your, your subject is super shooken up from news that they got. Well, this can help create that effect that they're completely discombobulated and they're not 100% and they're not seeing well or, or their vision's blurred or whatever. Or maybe your subject is drunk. It's really good to do something like that. Another reason you might want to do this is you want that shutter drag effect. And so with photos, sometimes you can have the streaky lights and blurry photos and it feels very vintage. And this is a really cool effect you can do that kind of creates a dreamlike effect. And so this causes a bit of that feeling like it's outside of time and it's creating that dreamlike effect and is great for a, a dream sequence. Because sometimes when you are remembering a dream, it feels very much like that where it's blurry and you don't remember everything. And so that's one good reason to do that. And then the last point, and this is mainly why I use it, uh, because I do less narrative work like that, uh, is to just have a really cool 
unique looking, almost film-like look to your footage. Uh, just because it's a little more blurry, it's a little less perfect. It's not crisp and sharp like a lot of these digital cameras are now. And it also is just a fun little sequence. And so if you have a bunch of the same looking shots, then it's really cool to mix those in, maybe make them black and white and grainy and add some film burns and stuff. And so it's just a really cool, fun tool to use. I, some people like to throw prisms in front of their lenses and stuff, and this is just another tool. And you can always break the rules and have fun with it. And so, yeah, that'll wrap up this video. Uh, if you stayed this long, that would be awesome if you subscribed and liked this video. It actually really helps YouTube uh, just tell people like, oh, this is a good video. Let's push it more. And so I appreciate it. And you can stick around and watch some more videos maybe.